Hello everybody, welcome to the video today. We have something a little bit different. We're not doing a random official race here in iRacing or a league race as we would normally do. We are instead looking at the brand new BMW M8 GTE released for 2019 Season 2 on the sim. Um, the only new car I believe for this season build. It's pretty light on the new content this season build but some other stuff in the background though. Obviously with the last update having the dynamic weather and time stuff going on, it makes sense this one will be a little bit smaller. But still, we do at least get a new GTE, the big boy, the thick boy BMW, um, the mighty Bimmer uh, here in iRacing. So, haven't touched it yet, literally have just got it and just put it out on track. Decided to pick Imola to drive it just because, mostly because I just like Imola. It's just a track I really like and it's one of my favourites. Um in the sim and just in general so i figured rather than do spa or Le Mans, you know one of the ones everybody else has probably done we'll do something a little bit different that i don't think many would choose to do um so yeah we'll uh, take it out and do some laps get an initial impression and uh you know just see how it drives all righty here we go in the pit lane for the first time make sure we've got the pedals right sounds pretty good Oh, heard the, oh, hear the noise of the turbo and everything there. So all baseline, haven't touched the setup or anything, literally just load it up, straight into it. Ooh, I like the sound of it. Ooh, yeah. Sounds good. Nice. Good stuff so far. A bit weird driving this around here, because the last thing I drove around here was a supercar and an enduro a few days ago, so... Or well, last week, so... A bit different to get used to this. What the noises so far? Oh yeah! A little bit of wheel spin. Play what it sounds apart so far, it looks the part too. Here in Sunrise, here at Imola. So, pretty cool conditions. I'm liking the sounds so far, that's for sure. Oh, lots of curb. Tell you what, feels nice and comfortable to drive. Obviously, the track temp's only 19 though, so it's a pretty ice cold track. If you explain why it feels so nice to drive, plenty of grip in these conditions. Okay, a little bit of wheel spin there, pushing a bit too hard. And so far, it feels pretty good. It feels very stable again in these cooler conditions. It would feel quite stable. Oh, bounce off the curb nicely there. Lock up city, lots of locking. I'll bring that brake bias back just a little bit. That's a bit better. There we go.
Oh, a bit of overstay there. Tell you what, feels very nice. Again, in these conditions at will, because it's a nice and cool track, but... Sun begins to rise, that's quite nice seeing that. It does feel very nice though. Interesting feeling too, it kinda... Yeah, it reminds me of the Ferrari driving and it. it's got a similar feel to it, to the Ferrari, I think. It certainly doesn't feel quite as, as sort of, I suppose, stiff. As the as the Ford does, not quite as stiff feeling. Feels a bit softer, like the like the Ferraris. Looks like it doesn't mind bashing the curbs either. So far, it feels good. You can feel the you use the same sort of intricacies in the oh, force feedback here as you can in the, the other GTEs. As I say, just driving now, it kind of does feel a lot like the Ferrari. It me. seems like it doesn't mind bashing the curbs pretty hard. So it's not, not like the pull like that, not like the Porsche. These remind me a lot of the Ferrari, you know, it seems just a, a pretty, a bit of an easy one to jump in, it feels like. Really bash the curbs over there, and there seems to be no worries. Sounds a bit nicer than the RF2 version. Like, it's a bit more detail, at least to my ears, compared to the RF2 version. It's kind of, I'm not much point comparing it in terms of how it feels to drive the RF2 version because the RF2 just has a very different feeling to IR in general. So I don't think there's a lot of point in trying to compare there because obviously those who don't know RF2 has had the BMW M8 GT for a while now. So actually race it in a endurance league in the virtual endurance championship so when I'm available which is not every race but when I can I race it for an Aussie team there so and again I don't have as much point comparing them in terms of driving because just the two sims drive very differently um, so I don't see much point comparing them like that but I do think this one to me sounds a little better there's a bit more detail in the sound to me the RF2 one just sounds a bit flatter you know it's not quite as much detail to it at least from what my ears are telling me. Oh man, bashing that curb too much. This lap's a terrible lap too, but anyway, it's alright. I can see this getting used a lot though. I mean, it already was going to get used a lot. As long as it wasn't impossible to drive, it was always going to probably get used a lot in the upcoming IMSA and ILMS seasons. Another thing as well, um, it's worth mentioning, it's kind of important, is they have increased the driver limit, I'm pretty sure, so now, I mean, sorry, not the driver limit, the car limit for the series, 
for what they can have. They used to have, used to be five was the maximum cars for a very long time from what I understand. And, and a while back they increased it to six and now with at least the M8, they've increased it to seven. Different cars can now run in the one series, which is quite quite cool. So that now means ILMS can have, um, although they already, already only had six to be fair, so, sorry. Yeah, it did, so they had six and also IMSA had six, so. So now, now they're both able to run the M8 and not, they don't have to get rid of a car to make room for it. So it now means that we'll have the four GTs in IMSA. Um, I think the DP is continuing or it might be being taken out. I'm not actually quite sure what the go is there because we still don't have a modern DPI. And from what I understand, I don't see doing this one coming anytime soon because from what I understand, the teams who actually run them in real life aren't very keen to share the data, which fair enough. So. Don't know when we'll get one of them, but it'll not sure if the, so not sure if the DP is staying, but it'll either be DP, the four GTs, and the two GT3s, or it may actually be just the four GTs and two GT3s. I might even have one more GT3 to, if they're you know if they're getting rid of the DP, so I'm not really sure there. But we'll mean ILMS is the key one now, because it will mean that we have the obviously two LMP ones, the Porsche and the Audi, and then you've got the HPD, um, and then you'll now have the four GTEs to choose from. So that's kind of cool that they're gonna increase that number so we don't have to sacrifice a car to make room, so that's good. But yeah, I'll tell you what, just from these first laps, it feels really nice. And yeah, again, as I say, the track temp is very low, it's like 90 degrees or something, so I decided to do a sunrise session, so quite cool conditions, so... I mean, track, track usage is only at about 35%, so it's pretty low, but even so, in these conditions, it's gonna feel pretty grippy no matter what because it's um, nice and cool so but even so you can still kind of get an idea of what it feels like and as I say it does feel really nice to be honest on the baseline anyway really stable maybe a little bit slow and squirrely on throttle but not that much as I say it reminds me a lot of the Ferrari at the moment it seems to not mind bashing the curbs like the Ferrari does it feels pretty neutral it doesn't feel like it's too, it doesn't feel quite as tight as the Ford does, you know, so it doesn't feel quite as downforce dependent as the Ford does, but it doesn't feel kind of as soft, I suppose, as the Porsche does. It's, driving the Porsche, to me at least, has a bit of a softer kind of feel to it. It's a bit more, a little floatier, I suppose, for lack of a better term, but this feels like it's kind of in that middle ground with Ferrari, you know, where it's sort of a little bit of both and, and probably the the best to sort of jump in, or easiest to jump in and learn to drive, which is generally why the Ferrari, no matter what track you go to, the Ferrari tends to have decent numbers in the GTEs, just because it's the easy, easiest, in my mind at least, the easiest of the GTEs to drive, and I think this thing definitely has similar vibes to me, at least, so we'll see, we'll see how it goes, it'll be interesting to see whether it is a bit OP early on, whether they've managed to balance it right off, off the very, you know, from the get-go, which I'll be pretty surprised if they manage to bop it, you know, correctly straight away, but we'll see. But yeah, it feels really good to me, I'm quite enjoying it. Looks the part, obviously, all the dashboard and everything looks right to me. So yeah, so far, big old thumbs up from me, so um, so yeah, there you go, that's basically it. That was this short little video, just having a first drive in the car and, you know, describing my, my initial thoughts on it. As I say, so far, I'm uh, yeah, quite enjoying it. So, as I say, I can see see this car getting a lot of attention. As as I say, it's always always going to get a lot of attention anyway. Um, being the new car, new the GTEs. As long as I say, as long as it drove, you know, semi well, it wasn't that hard to drive. It wasn't too hard to drive. I think it's always going to it's going to get you know a lot of numbers initially, obviously. In, um, an ILMS, but but yeah, no, as I said, it feels really good. I'm quite enjoying it. it. Feels really good. Looks good. You know, it's ticking all the boxes to me so far. But I am quite easy to please, so, so you know, that's something to bear in mind. So and again, I haven't got any any real life racing experience, so I can't really back up anything what I'm saying with any kind of you know any link to that. So everything I'm saying is my opinion and mine only, which could be very wrong but but there you go we'll pull in the pits I think call it there and uh, yeah there you go yeah no good fun good fun 
good fun. Enjoy it. Enjoying it. Looks like it'll be a, a good fun car to drive, and I'm pretty keen to have a, a race or two in it. Have a go. Adds another GT to cycle through. <laughs> so, you know, all good to me. But, um, yeah. No, good stuff. Good stuff. I think, from what I can tell, I have, um, yeah, done a pretty good job, I think. So, there you are. We're going to get a pitch service that, excuse me, that I don't want, so we'll just escape out of that. But there you go. There you go, the BMW M8. And we'll go back and just sort of... And just let ourselves be seen. I'll go by the TV cameras and we'll just have a look-see as it goes around. I've got the lights on and the sunrise. Oh, there's that Andy Cup that did not like. See the LEDs there in the back window. It's a very thick boy, isn't it? It's a very wide car, isn't it? Memes are not very not too far off the truth with this car. It does sound good though. It's a very unique sounding car, but it does sound nice as I say. I think IR have done a good job with the sound of it. A bit like with the RSR, you know, it sounds quite nice. So yeah, there you go. That's my I suppose initial thoughts uh, on the BMW. Um, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, and, you know, I'm sure I'll see. I'm sure I'll at least give this a few goes in the new season. Um, not sure how I'll go, how early I'll try and have a run on it. I'll probably give it a go in the first couple of weeks, um, but I don't think I'll drive too much because obviously those first few weeks are going to be just absolutely manic. Um, it'll be a literal war zone <laughs> in IMSA and ILMS, so I don't know if I'll race it too much initially, but a bit later in the season when the hype dies down, I'll probably race it a bit more, but yeah, there you go. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that little spiel. It was basically just me an excuse to an excuse for me to have a bit of a spiel about any car, so <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed. But um, yeah, until the next video, let's bye for now.